Hey guys, today I'll show you a horror TV series named All of Us Are Dead Season 1. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. This drama begins at a high school, where an honest high school student is cornered by a group of young thugs on a rooftop on a rainy night. They relentlessly bully him, but he doesn't fight back, allowing them to beat him up. When one of the attackers kicks him against the wall, he finally picks up a baseball bat and swings back. But he's no match for the overwhelming numbers against him. The bullies become more brazen, stepping on him with no remorse. Seeing this, the boy lunged at the bullies in desperation. But one attacker pushes him, causing him to fall off the rooftop. The bullies flee the scene. Sometime later, the boy is rushed to the hospital. Although he survives, his skull is fractured. As the doctor makes a phone call, the boy's father sneaks into the care unit, filled with grief as he looks at his badly injured son. However, the boy's eyes are now clouded with hatred, determined to kill all the bullies. His face contorts in anger and his body becomes uncontrollable. Seeing this, the father apologizes as he grabs a Bible from a shelf and strikes his son. The compassionate father then places his son in a suitcase, intending to dispose of the body in the wilderness. But just then, the sound of a rapid heartbeat fills the father's ears. Believing his son isn't completely dead, he checks his pulse. As he does so, the hand suddenly grabs his arm, scaring the father to flee his shitty life. The ordeal isn't over yet, as the suitcase starts to shake violently. The terrified father sitting on the floor doesn't even dare to breathe, but only dares to wet his pants. The scene then shifts to a peaceful classroom where students are taking turns on duty in the hallway. The atmosphere is enjoyable, but unknown to everybody, a storm is brewing at the school. A girl on duty suddenly hears a noise coming from the neighboring lab and goes to investigate. Finding nothing, she's about to leave when the suitcase on the floor moves slightly. Driven by curiosity, she carefully opens it, revealing a cute little hamster. But in the next second, the hamster becomes aggressive and bites her greasy finger. Just then, the science teacher returns to the lab and asks the greasy girl what she's doing there. Worried about being found out, she tries to leave quickly, but her greasy body is grabbed by the teacher from behind. In the end, the man injects her with a sedative and locks her in the lab. Even when another female teacher arrives searching for the missing girl, the science teacher dismisses her with some excuse. But as soon as he returns to the lab, the girl starts bleeding from her nose and becomes violent. He has to increase the sedative dose just to keep her subdued. However, while he's teaching his class, the girl manages to break free and escape. Covered in blood, she enters the classroom claiming that the science teacher locked her up. Her classmates immediately carry her heavy body to the infirmary. By this point, she's incoherent, and as the doctor administers more medication, she frantically scratches and bites at those around her. Left with no choice, her classmates call an ambulance to take her to the hospital. It's revealed that the father of the boy who was bullied by the gang at the beginning of the story is, in fact, the same person as the science teacher in the school lab. This man called Chan was once a genius in his youth, but for some unknown reason he ended up as a science teacher. Students in the school would often discuss how he always seemed to have a stench of rotting flesh about him. In reality, this odor came from a hormone substance he had been researching for years, hoping to enhance his son's body so that he would no longer be bullied. However, the hormone substance mutated within his son, turning into a zombie virus, which explains why the submissive boy suddenly resisted the bullies that night. The student girl who Chan imprisoned in the lab was one of the bullies who tormented his son that night. Chan returned to the lab only to find the girl missing, and he became anxious. He worried that the virus would spread and plunge the entire city into crisis. He knew he had to find the girl quickly to prevent the virus from spreading. As he prepared to head to the hospital, two teachers suddenly appeared and stopped him. They took Chan to the principal's office, where he told everyone that they needed to isolate the infected girl immediately. However, his pleas fell on deaf ears, and instead, they accused him of his wrongdoings. The principal told Chan that the school had already been negatively affected by his son's incident. Chan became enraged, telling the principal that his son was the real victim and that the school had suppressed the incident. The principal was a hypocrite dressed in a suit, only caring about his own reputation and completely disregarding the feelings of teachers and parents. He just wanted to resolve the issue quickly without involving other institutions. Hearing this, Chan turned and left. Just then, two police officers burst in, handcuffed Chan, and took him to the interrogation room. On the other side, the doctor who was bitten by the girl experienced a sudden change in the wound on her right arm. 
Black veins spread from the wound, her eyes turned blood red, and her body temperature rose, causing her to tremble. After a series of crisp bone-cracking sounds and seizure-like shaking, the doctor became a full-fledged zombie. By this time, it was noon and school was out, with students wandering around the campus. Outside the infirmary, two mischievous boys took out their phones, intending to capture the non-stop action on camera. But the next second, the blood-covered doctor charged out of the room. The boy taking pictures remained calm, using his phone to record this exciting moment. It wasn't until the doctor bit his friend's oily face that he realized something was wrong. The bitten student eventually turned into a zombie as well, barging into the classroom and biting anyone visible in sight and anyone smelly in odor. In less than a minute, two more smelly students had been attacked. Before this, campus bullying had never stopped. There were still well-dressed high school students in uniforms who were morally reprehensible, wreaking havoc. In a dirty corner, they dragged a girl named Min and a boy into a building under construction. The next second, they tore off Min's clothes and forced the boy to take pictures. Just then, a handsome man named Lee suddenly appeared. He used to be part of this gang, but now he had reformed. Lee stopped the bullies and tried to take the two away, but the gang behind him threatened to post the humiliating video online if Min left the building. Desperate to protect her reputation, Min had no choice but to stay behind. When the zombie outbreak began, Min, with nowhere else to run, went to the roof of the school building, intending to end her life. Just as she was about to jump, the boy appeared behind her. Min soon realized that the boy had feelings for her, but she thought that two weak people becoming a couple would only be ostracized even more. At these words, the boy could only shed silent tears. Just then, people started jumping off the building one after another, pulling Min out of her suicidal state. Meanwhile, a boy named San and a girl named Nam were eating in the cafeteria. The two had been best friends since childhood, but San didn't want to be just friends with Nam. He wanted to turn their friendship into a hormone ship, but was afraid of losing her, so he never told her his feelings. When he found out that Nam liked Lee, not him, he was stunned on the spot. But then, a large group of students suddenly rushed into the cafeteria, running desperately as if avoiding something. In the chaos, Nam was knocked down by a classmate. Instead of getting up and fleeing, she was stunned on the ground. As a result, a zombie charged right in front of her. Countless zombies roamed the campus, biting anyone they encountered. In the principal's office, the principal continued to fawn over the leader on the phone. He didn't care about the students' lives and even claimed that the school had confiscated all mobile phones when the students entered. After hanging up, the principal questioned the teachers in the office, asking why someone had called the police about zombies on campus when all phones had been confiscated and even locked in a safe. At this point, a female teacher asked the principal how he could say everything was fine. The situation was chaotic, and they should have called the police and evacuated the students. However, the principal ignored her advice. The female teacher left the office in anger. At this time, the school building was empty. The female teacher was about to go upstairs when a zombie appeared behind her. Just as the female teacher tried to stop the zombie, she saw its bloodied mouth lunging at her. She was scared and fell on the stairs, but she quickly got up and fled the scene. On the other side, hordes of zombies were wreaking havoc in the cafeteria. Many students were bitten and gradually turned into zombies. Nam, a girl who had been knocked to the ground, faced the danger of becoming a zombie's lunch. In the nick of time, her good friend San came to rescue her. The chaotic scene triggered the school's alarm system, with sprinklers showering water onto the zombies and students, making the terrifying cafeteria even more horrifying. San pulled Nam up, and they jumped onto a table, planning to find the right moment to escape the cafeteria. The delinquent student, nicknamed Bully, who had humiliated Min earlier, was now pinned down by a female zombie, rubbing against him to possibly have a zombie baby. If it weren't for him using a tray to hold off the zombie's neck, he would have already died with his virginity lost to a zombie. More zombies rushed towards him. He kicked away the annoying zombie and hid under a table in the kitchen. By that time, San had already led the girl to jump out of the cafeteria window, only to find the schoolyard was even more chaotic. An out-of-control truck barreled down the road, taking out many zombies and students before crashing into the wall of the school building. Seeing this, San led the girl to climb onto the truck and onto a balcony. As soon as the two arrived in the corridor, a group of zombies attacked them, and San was tackled to the ground. In desperation, Nam picked up a fire extinguisher and sprayed it at the zombies, finally saving her friend from the thick fog. The two then escaped into a classroom. Meanwhile, Lee was now with another girl, facing a zombie attack. 
The pair used a ladder to escape to the same classroom where San was. Nam felt disheartened as she saw Lee being very caring towards the girl. The group's only goal now was to prevent zombies from invading the classroom, and their only solution was to call for help. However, they had all handed in their phones since the beginning of the school year, so everyone searched through the desks for any spare phones. Before long, a student found a phone on a girl's seat. However, they didn't know the password to unlock it. Despite this, the students still held the phone up to the already zombified girl, attempting to recognize her once innocent face. Nam reminded them that they didn't need to unlock the phone to make an emergency call. San looked dumbfounded upon hearing this. Even though they managed to call the police, the officers only responded perfunctorily. However, the continuous emergency calls eventually caught the police's attention. Upon hearing the police's response, San and the others were almost certain they wouldn't be saved. Nam, however, didn't give up. Her father, firefighter, worked at the fire department. So she lied about the school being on fire and successfully lured the firefighters to their location. Time ticked by and the zombies downstairs continued their rampage. The students hiding in the classroom had been waiting for a long time, but the police had yet to show up. At this point, a shady girl in a pink shirt named Shady Girl grew increasingly restless. She started complaining to everyone and even berated the innocent boy who was keeping watch. The boy, insulted by her words, became furious and seemed ready to fight. He started arguing with the girl, completely forgetting his task at hand. Fortunately, Lee reminded him of his duties, and he realized his mistake. Just then, a teacher sneaked into the classroom when no one was paying attention. His arrival caused the leaderless group of students to unite. To prevent the zombies from invading, they used desks to block the door. Amidst the chaos, Nam noticed a wound on the teacher's right arm. Upon hearing the student's suspicions about his injury, the teacher couldn't maintain his pretense any longer. Within seconds, he collapsed to the ground, convulsing. When the students were in shock, he pounced on a girl, but not on a boy. The students quickly moved the desks and fled the classroom, leaving the two transformed zombies locked inside. But they had no idea how many zombies were lurking outside. At that moment, Lee showcased his true strength. He fought off more than a dozen zombies, making it look effortless. The thrilling scene was interrupted by a scream from Shady Girl, which brought the other boys back to reality. San grabbed a window and threw it at the zombies, while the other male students followed suit, barely holding back the horde. One overweight male student took things to another level, picking up a door and charging at the zombies in a slow-motion shot. With the combined resistance, the group quickly arrived at another classroom door, which was unfortunately locked. More zombies approached from both directions down the hallway. The boys used windows and doors to fend off the attackers, while the girls tried desperately to unlock the door. Through their collective effort, they managed to escape into the classroom just as the zombies broke through their defenses. However, the zombies soon shattered the classroom windows. Luckily, the boys brought in desks and chairs, barely keeping the zombies at bay. At this point, Nam suddenly noticed that Lee had disappeared. The other students were equally clueless. In reality, Lee had already broken through the zombie encirclement and hidden in another classroom. He then escaped through a window when the zombies attacked. After everyone calmed down, Nam and her best friend began talking about love. However, as they held hands, Nam noticed that her friend's hand was ice cold. The next moment, the girl's nose started bleeding. It turned out that she had been bitten by a zombie during the fight in the hallway. Despite her insisting that she hadn't been bitten, Nam grew suspicious. This caught the attention of the other students. In less than a minute, the girl transformed into a zombie and threw her zombified but still sexy body at San. At this point, Nam tearfully pleaded with San to stop hurting her friend. San couldn't believe what he was hearing, because this was a zombie after all. When the zombie was pushed out of the window, she grabbed the zombie's hand. Left with no choice, San picked up a chair and knocked the zombie down. As time passed by, everyone's energy gradually waned. They would likely starve to death in the classroom before the police arrived. So after discussing their options, a few people decided to flee. They secured a water pipe and threw it out the window, using it as a makeshift rope to descend into the female teacher's office. However, when San climbed down the window, the classroom door could no longer withstand the onslaught of zombies. Dozens of zombies poured in, pushing San out the window. Meanwhile, in a school restroom, a couple was also in a dire predicament. 
Just as they were at their wit's end, a brother and sister armed with bows and arrows arrived, shooting an arrow that killed a zombie in the nick of time. The couple narrowly escaped death. On the other side, the police had taken Chan to the interrogation room, and they finally learned that the chaos outside was caused by a virus created by Chan. They obtained permission from the Ministry of Defense to rescue the survivors and deploy all available forces against the zombies. Elsewhere, Lee escaped through the window and happened to see San, who hadn't fallen to the ground yet, entangled by a zombie's foot. Since San couldn't shake off the zombie, Lee promised to find him soon. But at that moment, a bloodthirsty zombie appeared above Lee, leaping from the window toward him as if he were a delicious meal. Seeing this, Lee kicked the zombie entangling San's foot, sending her flying away like an adult toy. The two then reached the female teacher's office, reuniting with their classmates. However, as soon as they jumped down from the window, Shady Girl angrily demanded they close the window. Unable to tolerate her arrogant attitude, Innocent Boy questioned if she only cared about saving herself. But Shady Girl insulted him. The female teacher intervened, asking for clarification about the insult. The students were reluctant to explain the issue. Lee then explained that the insult referred to students from impoverished backgrounds. The haughty shady girl naturally looked down on the boy, and although the teacher managed to mediate a temporary truce, she didn't listen to the teacher's advice. After calming down, the group tried to find a way to get help on the office computer. In a restroom, a girl who had been pregnant for 10 months gave birth to a baby alone. After enduring the painful struggle, she delivered a healthy infant, but she had to abandon the baby in the restroom and left by herself. As soon as she stepped out, she saw a mother and daughter caring for each other on a bench outside. Despite this, she still ignored her newborn child. The girl walked down the street when suddenly an out-of-control police car appeared, crashing into a car in front of her. Terrified, she fell to the ground, unable to move. At that moment, the police car's door was flung open, and two grotesque, trembling officers emerged before the onlookers. As the crowd gathered around the police car, a zombie burst out from inside, biting the man who had opened the door. A good Samaritan who had been taking photos with his phone was relentlessly pursued by a charming female zombie who liked to attack men only. Faced with the chaotic scene, the girl's maternal instincts were ignited. She returned to the restroom, picked up her child, and tried to escape. Despite her efforts, she was bitten by a zombie and turned into one herself. Until her very last moment, she used her body to protect her newborn from the zombie's onslaught. Back at the teacher's office, students were searching online for clues, when suddenly the window glass shattered. Everyone was on high alert, carefully observing the movements outside. San wanted to approach the window and investigate, but in the next moment, a zombie appeared before them, startling everyone into retreating. In the chaos, San grabbed a mop to attack the zombie, but after a few rounds, the mop was broken and San was left frozen in fear. As the zombie was about to climb through the window, Lee roared like a goose and took the stick from San's hand to attack the zombie, but the fight remained evenly matched. Seeing this, Innocent Boy couldn't sit still any longer. He grabbed a computer tower and smashed it towards the zombie, finally knocking it off the building. After the crisis, Shady Girl noticed that Innocent Boy had started to bleed from his nose. At the hospital, medical staff had already taken the girl who had been imprisoned by Chan off the ambulance. As they prepared to do a CT scan on her, she suddenly woke up, her body trembling violently and bending. The strange noises the girl made attracted curious onlookers. The nurse then urged everyone to call the police. Two doctors helped the injured nurse, and the surrounding patients fled in panic. With the joint efforts of several doctors, they restrained an infected person and tied it to a chair. Firefighter, Nam's father, came to the hospital to check on the situation, unaware of the zombie outbreak. He thought the patient could bite his tongue and wanted to stuff his mouth with tissue. But as they were stuffing the tissue, a team member was bitten. They didn't pay much attention to it, but not long after, Firefighter received a call from a colleague informing him about the virus outbreak. It was already too late, as the bitten team member suddenly spat blood and turned into a zombie. Luckily, two team members acted quickly and restrained the zombie temporarily. Back at the office, the students became cautious, seeing innocent boy's nosebleed. Despite his explanations, no one wanted to believe him. Another student inspected his wound, confirming it was caused by the computer and not a zombie bite, but Shady Girl's expression darkened. The overweight student, Chubby Boy, tries to get Shady Girl and Innocent Boy to apologize to each other. Yet she refused to admit her mistake and even blamed others. The teacher decided to have Innocent Boy stay in the recording studio for 10 minutes, and if he wasn't infected, Shady Girl would have to apologize to him. 
Thirty minutes passed quickly, but Innocent Boy still didn't want to come out. The others urged Shady Girl to go in and apologize to him. She only complied when the teacher stepped in, but she entered the recording studio with malicious intentions. She pretended to care about Innocent Boy's injury, wiped his wound with a handkerchief stained with zombie blood, and said many hurtful words. Innocent Boy lunged at her in anger, but their classmates intervened in time to prevent chaos. But Shady Girl didn't recognize her mistake and blamed everyone else. Just then, Innocent Boy's nosebleed started again, and Shady Girl had a smug look on her face. The classmates distanced themselves, and Innocent Boy, trembling, tried to leave. But before he could open the door, his consciousness began to blur. With a crisp sound of cracking bones, he transformed into a zombie. Thankfully, the classmates lured him to the window, and everyone narrowly escaped disaster. After some time, the class leader Choi approached Shady Girl and exposed her actions. It turned out that she had secretly smeared her handkerchief with zombie blood, causing Innocent Boy to turn into a zombie. However, Shady Girl denied it. Choi slapped her and she finally gave the handkerchief back, claiming the blood stain was from when she had wiped Innocent Boy's wound. Choi didn't believe her bullshit and challenged her to wipe her leg wound with the same handkerchief. If she didn't turn into a zombie, it would prove the blood stain was indeed normal. Enraged, Shady Girl picked up the handkerchief, intending to prove her innocence to everyone, but she hesitated at the last moment. The next second, the teacher came to her side, and the girl took the opportunity to play the victim, claiming Innocent Boy had merely mutated and run away. San couldn't stand her tearful lies any longer and pushed Shady Girl against the wall, saying she was the real killer. Shady Girl broke into crocodile tears and left the office alone. Witnessing her departure, the teacher seemed to understand something. She stood at the door, telling the students not to die no matter what happens and not to let anyone else die. After saying this, she left the office, offering herself up as a sacrifice. The students could only helplessly watch their teacher leave. Zombies had fully broken out across the city streets. San's mother was pursued by a group of zombies and hid in the shadows, climbing over a tall wall. However, as soon as she reached the playground, she encountered Innocent Boy, who had already turned into a zombie. Perhaps her vision was poor, for she didn't avoid him, but instead tiptoed towards him. In the next moment, Innocent Boy knocked her to the ground, and the commotion attracted other zombies who rushed towards her like they had found some delicious food. Just as she was about to be bitten, a helicopter appeared in the sky, attracting the zombies' attention. On the other side, San was overwhelmed with guilt as he watched the zombies wreak havoc on the campus. Thanks to Nam's comforting words, he regained his strength. Just then, a helicopter appeared before them, but it didn't rescue the students. The group sat together, discussing whether the teacher and Shady Girl had been attacked by zombies. A girl with a ponytail questioned whether Shady Girl deserved to live, considering she had killed a classmate and left on her own accord. At this, everyone fell silent for a while until Lee broke the silence by excusing himself to go to the bathroom. The atmosphere lightened as the students discussed how to go to the bathroom. Nam suggested they build a makeshift toilet. But after they finished constructing the toilet, Choi realized that they couldn't stay in the office for too long. They needed to find another way out. Nam insisted they wait for rescue and not leave their safe haven. Choi questioned how much longer they would have to wait, but Nam only wanted the group to hold on as long as possible. Lee interjected, saying that perhaps it was already night, and by morning, someone would come to rescue them. With so many helicopters outside, they would surely be saved. At the hospital, Firefighter received a notification from his superiors, stating that the Ministry of Defense had dispatched a helicopter to pick everyone up. They were instructed to be on the rooftop at 11 a.m. the next day. In the meantime, Firefighter had also constructed a makeshift toilet to deal with the waste. After settling everything, Firefighter requested to leave the hospital, but his superiors insisted he stay for the greater good. Meanwhile, Bully, who had previously harassed Min, was sneaking through the zombie-infested campus. He spotted a bicycle near the corner and approached it, planning to ride it to the school's back door. But as he took a step forward, the zombies detected the foul hormone smell emanating from him and immediately lunged at him. He managed to get on the bike, but the chain fell off. In anger, he threw the bike on the ground and ran into an office. During the ensuing struggle, he glimpsed a familiar face. He stabbed a knife into the zombie's neck with precision. Faced with the rampant zombie carnage, a detective arrived at the interrogation room to find Chan, angrily questioning if he knew what was happening. 
Chan remained eerily calm, explaining that it was a time when the strong preyed on the weak, and it wasn't unusual. Detective grabbed him by the collar, demanding to know why he had done this. Chan's mind drifted back to when his son was in high school, where he had been bullied relentlessly until he attempted to end his life. Chan sought to address the issue with the school. However, the bullies claimed it was all just harmless jokes between classmates. The other victims kept the truth hidden. After unsuccessfully appealing to the school, Chan injected his son with the zombie virus. Upon learning the truth, Detective asked Chan if he realized his actions would cause more deaths. Chan replied with a twisted expression, claiming that if minor acts of violence were ignored, the world would eventually be dominated by violence. Controlling his anger, Detective then asked Chan for a cure for the zombie virus, but Chan had not developed one. As they exited the interrogation room, they heard commotion within the police station. Detective cautiously approached with an iron rod, only to find zombies pouring in from the stairwell, causing chaos. Chan watched the scene with a faint smile, seeing people closer to their true nature and a different side of humanity. However, Chan still wanted to restore the beauty that once existed in his heart. He then saved Detective from the danger and instructed him to find his laptop, which contained the ultimate solution to the problem. After that, Chan used his body to block the attack of dozens of zombies. Detective leaped from the stairs, arriving at the chaotic parking lot. After an intense escape, he finally managed to flee the area with a surviving colleague. The next morning, the group prepared to set off, risking being surrounded by zombies as they made their way to the rooftop. However, when they finally arrived, they found the door tightly locked. Firefighter had to hold off the zombies while another team member used pliers to break the lock. With everyone's cooperation, they made it to the rooftop just as the zombies were about to swarm them. Firefighter then fired a flare, attracting the attention of nearby helicopters. Meanwhile, the students in the office had a safe night. Upon waking, they saw several helicopters in the sky, but none landed in front of them. Following Nam's suggestion, they decided to write a rescue message and signal the helicopters for help. However, they didn't have a cloth to write it on. Ignoring Nam's objections, San went to the neighboring office alone to get one. Lee, worried about San, also went with him. After some climbing, they reached the window outside the neighboring office, sneaking in secretly. But as soon as they arrived, they heard noises from the other side of the room. They saw Min kneeling on the floor, smashing phones to pieces. It turned out that Bully had taken compromising photos of her and set them to be sent automatically. If they didn't receive money by the agreed-upon time, the photos would be posted online. But the zombie crisis erupted before they could cancel the auto-send. To clear her name, Min risked being bitten by zombies to come to the office and smash all the phones. Just then, a phone on the table displayed an upload notification. Enraged, Min smashed it to bits. In the process, a fallen phone was spotted by San and Lee. As San was about to pick it up, Min noticed them. Lee pulled Min away, attracting the attention of zombies. Despite the danger, San went alone to the zombie-infested hallway for the phone and even made it outside the teaching building, where more and more zombies were arriving. San seized the opportunity to enter the principal's office. The next second he saw the principal being held down by bully. Both shameless people were defending themselves and San recorded everything on the phone he had just acquired. To his surprise, Bully killed the principal with a knife and furiously charged at San, leading to a chase through the hallways. Elsewhere, the Archer siblings had left the restroom with the couple, navigating the zombie-ridden hallways. Nam and others in the office were still waiting for helicopter rescue, but the helicopters flew over the teaching building without stopping, causing despair among the group. Firefighter and his colleagues had boarded a helicopter and were being transported to a quarantine zone. The latest news came through their earpieces, stating that the Ministry of Defense had issued a state of emergency due to the virus outbreak in the city. Other cities' residents showed extreme indifference to those fleeing from the city, turning them away and even throwing objects at them. Some unscrupulous media figures took advantage of the situation to create even more controversy. The entire city was in chaos, with the panic-induced riots proving even more terrifying than the zombie crisis itself. At the same time, Lee had already climbed over the wall and entered the office. When everyone saw him return alone, they all asked about San's whereabouts, but Lee remained silent. Seeing this, Nam hurriedly looked for San from the window, but still couldn't find any trace of him. Nam was filled with despair, and all Lee could do was to say sorry to her. Meanwhile, San was running through the hallways, trying to escape. A knife thrown by Bully barely knocked him down, but San quickly got back up, grabbing the cell phone as he did. 
After several escapes, he ended up in the library, leaping onto a bookshelf, only to be pulled down by another student. Bully climbed onto the bookshelf like a mad dog and dragged that student down as well. Soon, a fierce chase unfolded in the library, with San climbing back onto a bookshelf. However, zombies gathered at the base of the bookshelf, almost dragging him down. San leaped onto another bookshelf as the zombies climbed up, narrowly avoiding disaster. But Bully also made it onto the bookshelf, staring San down from across the way. Bully demanded the cell phone, but San refused to submit. The two engaged in muscle wrestling on the bookshelf, and when Bully found an opening, he pounced like a mad dog, knocking San to the ground. But San still managed to climb back onto the bookshelf, fighting Bully as more zombies reached out for them. San was pinned under Bully, who pulled out the cell phone, but he snatched it back and jabbed the cell phone into his eye, blinding him. Finally, San dragged Bully off the bookshelf. When Bully hit the ground, numerous zombies bit and gnawed at him. San quickly got up and jumped to another bookshelf with zombies in hot pursuit. But as he was about to escape, he slipped, falling heavily to the ground. With zombies about to attack him, he had to get up with all his might. At the last moment, before the zombies reached him, he managed to shut the library doors. San escaped to the hallway and crawled into a pipe but he was still caught by a zombie grabbing his pants. As he struggled with the zombie, the Archer siblings arrived, killing the zombie. However, they didn't notice San and proceeded to an office where they found a computer. But just then, the Ministry of Defense imposed an emergency internet control order to prevent the spread of false news about mass infections that could cause public panic. San and the Archer girl tried to use a phone and the internet, but they couldn't connect to any signal or network. On the other side, Nam stood at the windowsill of the office, feeling heartbroken over San's departure. Lee was also remorseful. Looking at the helicopter flying overhead, Nam came up with an idea. She wanted to use a drone to find San. However, her classmate told her that the drone was left in the science classroom, and retrieving it meant going through hordes of zombies. Undeterred, Nam wondered if there would be fewer zombies in the supply room and if they might find a spare drone there. She also encouraged everyone by saying that they needed to rely on themselves to find San. Choi agreed with her, pointing out that a drone could not only locate San, but also observe the situation outside and send a message for help. After discussing it, the group decided to send Nam and the boy to the supply room together. Following a rope, the two climbed to the supply room, which was free of zombies. They quickly packed the drone into a bag, and before the zombies could enter, they climbed back to the office using the rope. The boy attached a help message to the drone and flew it out while wearing glasses to control it. Everyone gathered around the screen, finally seeing the current state of the school. Classmates and teachers had all turned into zombies, leaving the students saddened. At the same time, Detective and his partner were navigating the zombie-infested streets. After a series of escapes, they arrived at San's family's fried chicken shop, where they encountered the girl who had just given birth to a baby. The two officers decided to take the baby and escape with the girl. By this time, San was trapped in a pipe, thinking about his beloved mother and friends. He grieved for the friends he had lost, and was furious at the world ravaged by zombies. San mustered his courage and used all his strength to kick the cabinet door open. Once he was out, zombies attacked him from both sides. San cautiously ran for his life, eventually reaching a music classroom. Meanwhile, the Archer group of four in the office was also planning to escape to the training ground to use the emergency phone to call for help. With the Archer siblings' cooperation, they quickly jumped out of the window to the ground. At the same time, the drone caught sight of an arrow stuck in a zombie. A boy watching the screen fell into grief, realizing that the Archer girl was his older sister. He remembered her competitions and feared she had been bitten by a zombie. However, they still couldn't find San's whereabouts. Just when everyone was about to lose hope, the drone spotted San in the music classroom. Overjoyed, Lee hugged Nam, but realized the awkwardness and let her go. After confirming San's location, they turned their attention to the area outside the school. The drone roamed the city streets, and by chance, a student saw her zombified parents on the screen, which brought her to tears. Just at that moment, Firefighter and his group successfully landed at the headquarters, where all the quarantined citizens were gathered. They approached the military commander, but he informed them that they needed to be isolated until the examination was complete. The teammate refused to comply and insisted on entering the headquarters. So the commander raised his voice and scolded her, finally taking them to the quarantine area. After some while, the injured bully suddenly opened his eyes. He looked at his wounds and questioned whether he had died or not. At that moment, dozens of zombies began to approach him. 
However, after detecting his scent, they shifted their attention elsewhere. Shocked and delighted, Bully went to a mirror to examine his injuries. He then made up his mind to kill San. Strolling down the hallway, he calmly put on a tracksuit and shouted San's name. The surrounding zombies seemed to respond to the command and became agitated. After smashing her phone, Min finally calmed down. She emotionlessly applied lipstick in front of the bathroom mirror. On the other hand, Bully picked up a knife, his expression suggesting he was planning something sinister. The survivors in the office remained immersed in their grief, while Shady Girl hid in the music classroom compartment where San was, paying attention to the movement outside. Upon learning of her parents' deaths, a female student climbed onto the windowsill, intending to end her life. Her classmates immediately intervened, pulling her down. To console her, Nam talked with her for a long time, mentioning her father and deceased friends. The girl sobbed on the table after listening, but as she lay down, she accidentally touched the microphone, emitting a piercing noise. Seeing this, Choi suggested using a loudspeaker to play music to attract zombies, then escaping the office to meet up with San, and finally going to the rooftop to call for a helicopter evacuation. After confirming the plan, they put a disc into the machine and turned on the broadcast. The loud sound attracted numerous zombies, but the noise affected both Bully and Min, who struggled with pain. After testing the equipment, everyone called out to San. Lee and Nam told San to stay put and wait for them before starting the disc. Countless zombies rushed toward the source of the sound, while Bully headed for the broadcast room, intending to kill everyone. As the zombies cleared out, the group prepared to leave the office. However, a single zombie remained in the hallway, so Lee decided to cautiously venture out. But as they passed by the zombie, the boy accidentally dropped his water bottle, causing the zombie to notice them. At Lee's command, they all rushed upstairs, but Lee ended up grappling with the zombie. Meanwhile, Bully arrived at the office and saw their escape plan on the table. He quickly left and saved Lee just in time from being pinned down by the zombie. However, Bully insisted on knowing San's whereabouts, and Lee refused to betray his friend. The two began to fight. Since Bully had been bitten by a zombie, his strength had increased significantly. After a few rounds, he knocked Lee to the ground. Just then, Choi arrived in time, but she was no match for Bully. Lee stood up and pushed Bully out the window. At last, Nam and the others met San in the music classroom. They discussed heading to the rooftop to await rescue. Shady Girl, who had been hiding in the compartment, overheard their plan. After the group left, she quietly unlocked the door, intending to leave. However, zombies had already swarmed the area. San and the others hadn't been gone for long before they were forced to return to the music classroom. But just as everyone was resting, a short-haired girl noticed a wound on Choi's arm. The group tensed up again. Faced with everyone's suspicions, Lee defended Choi, claiming she was bitten by Bully, not a zombie. However, San said that he had seen Bully being bitten by a zombie, and judging by the wound on Choi's arm, it couldn't be nothing. Still, Lee trusted his intuition and took Choi to the windowsill, vowing to push her off if she showed any abnormalities. Choi told everyone that if she started to act strangely, she would jump from the windowsill herself without bothering Lee. Meanwhile, after settling down at the headquarters, Firefighter planned how to get to his daughter Nam, but the soldiers told him that regardless of his identity, he had to undergo quarantine. Unable to wait any longer, Firefighter took down several soldiers. Then he and his men changed into soldiers' uniforms and left the area. On the other hand, the archery group managed to break through the zombie encirclement and reached the archery range. However, the emergency phone still didn't work, so they had to come up with another plan. Minutes passed quickly, and Choi's eyes turned bright red, and her consciousness began to blur. She glanced at Lee, and her predatory instinct was instantly triggered. The next second, she lunged at Lee. San noticed the anomaly in time, but it was still a step too late. Fortunately, Lee wasn't bitten, but San insisted on pushing her off the building. Nam stepped in front of San, claiming that Choi hadn't turned into a zombie. So under her insistence, San reluctantly put down his weapon. Once everyone had calmed down, Choi talked about her experience. She was sure she wanted to bite at that moment, but her consciousness quickly took over and suppressed the urge. Afterward, Choi wanted to leave, but Nam tried to keep her there. At that moment, the girl told Nam that zombies had killed her parents, leaving her homeless. She would never stay with Choi. But Lee picked up a cloth and tied his hand to Choi's, indicating that they were in this together, living or dying. Through their conversation, the group guessed that there might be immune cells in Choi's body, preventing her from fully turning into a zombie after being bitten by the infected bully. Meanwhile, Detective decided to take the baby and escape the fried chicken shop on a bicycle. 
He hid the baby in his clothes. However, as the two of them were preparing to leave on the bike, a little girl suddenly appeared behind them. Detective quickly picked her up, and his partner used a wooden stick to fend off the zombies. Seizing the last moment before the zombies attacked, the two of them quickly escaped into a house. Detective looked at the two homeless children and fell into deep thought. At the same time, the people in the music classroom hadn't eaten for a while, and their physical strength had significantly diminished. Shady Girl, who was in the adjacent room, locked the door quietly when she heard them talking about food. Just then, Chubby Boy found the door behind him, so they prepared to open it. Shady Girl quickly hid in a corner. However, their movements attracted the attention of the zombies. Chubby Boy had no choice but to stop, while a girl found a camera on the ground. After making sure it worked, she recorded everything she wanted to say. This prompted others to do the same, recording the things they wanted to say, but never had, to express their feelings to their parents on this special day. On the other side, Firefighter had just climbed over the high wall of the base when he was spotted by a soldier, but Firefighter managed to knock him down. However, this attracted the attention of the surrounding soldiers, who raised their guns and fired at Firefighter. After a thrilling escape, Firefighter jumped into a river. However, while underwater, he was still hit by a bullet. Despite being injured, Firefighter struggled to swim to the other side. Fortunately, the bullet did not hit any vital body parts or his smelly part, leaving only minor scratches. Meanwhile, Lee and Choi had a sincere conversation. They expressed their love for each other. Choi picked up the camera and recorded her confession to Lee. Then, before Lee could react, Choi kissed him but without using her tongue. Lee broke into a smile and held her hand. The two sat by the window waiting for fate to arrive. At this time, the infected Min walked down a corridor filled with zombies. Since her transformation, her hearing had become even more sensitive. She could clearly hear the sound of a kettle boiling and even the sound of a goldfish swimming in the water. Min arrived at the office door, effortlessly pulling the handle off, and discovered the teacher hiding inside. After telling the teacher she was hungry, she went to the fish tank and started eating the goldfish. This scene made the teacher doubt whether she had been bitten, but Min openly admitted the truth. The teacher pretended to be caring while holding a kettle, planning to hit her on the head. However, Min just picked up the goldfish from the floor and started talking to the teacher about bullying. The teacher panicked and hid a small knife behind his back. As Min lunged at him, he viciously stabbed her, but Min continued to devour his whole body, including his smelly part. Later, Min vomited everything she had eaten, and the noise in the office was heard by Choi. Since her mutation, she had the same keen hearing as the zombies. She could now hear Min's vomiting, the short-haired girl's breathing, and the movements of her classmates. Fearing that it would affect her, Choi proposed to escape. At this moment, Chubby Boy complained that if they had gone to the rooftop earlier, they wouldn't be in this situation. Nam then thought of a plan. She decided to set up a barrier in the middle of the classroom and use loud music to attract the zombies. So everyone put the plan into action. Several boys piled up the classroom's desks and chairs while the girls played music at maximum volume. Nam also untied the ropes around Lee and Choi's hands. On the other side, Bully recovered his appearance after falling from the building and went to wash his face in a pool. Suddenly, he heard someone cursing nearby. He found that his former gang boss was hiding under a car, avoiding zombie attacks. The boss called Bully to hide under the car too and asked him to lure the zombies away. Bully was unwilling but didn't say much. Instead, he pulled his boss out, which attracted the nearby zombies. He then broke his right hand, attracting even more zombies who eventually ended the boss's bossy life. At that moment, Bully mumbled to himself in the rearview mirror, determined to dig out San's eyes. Meanwhile, Firefighter had already escaped to the police station. After bandaging his wounds, he managed to open the storage room door. As the zombies outside rushed in, Firefighter broke the lock on the gun storage room, quickly loaded the bullets, and shot at the zombies before escaping through the window. On the other side, Detective put protective gear on the girl and prepared to ride the motorcycle to escape the shop. His partner grabbed a baseball bat to fend off the oncoming zombies. As more and more zombies approached, Detective rode the motorcycle into a narrow alley and shook off the zombies. The two then reached another street, but were stopped by a man trapped on a rooftop. The partner urged Detective to leave quickly, but he chose to save the man, entrusting the baby to his partner. However, the partner took the baby and fled with the girl on the motorcycle. 
Detective was furious, but no matter how much he shouted, his partner never stopped. After some time, the students inside the classroom had built barriers. Lee quickly opened the door, jumped over the barrier as the zombies rushed in. Seeing this, a music boy immediately played music on the camera, attracting a large number of zombies. In just a few seconds, the zombies from the entire teaching building gathered. San and others also struggled to prop up the barrier, preventing the zombies from breaking through. However, there were still zombies in the hallway. Nam instructed Chubby Boy to shout and attract the remaining zombies. In an instant, blood-stained hands reached out to the students. Bully also rushed over after hearing the commotion. The barrier was about to be toppled by the zombies, and after a while, all the zombies had gathered in the classroom, providing the perfect opportunity to escape. The group quickly ran out of the classroom and headed for the rooftop. Elsewhere, the Ministry of Defense locked a soldier bitten by a zombie in the research room, intending to develop a vaccine. As the commander left the lab, a councilwoman who was quarantined with Firefighter wanted to see him. The commander went to the quarantine area, and the councilwoman only wished to plead with the commander to send a helicopter to the school to rescue the surviving children. Even in the face of war, schools must not be abandoned. The commander agreed with that. However, since all the helicopters were engaged in combat, he had no choice but to send one performing a mission to patrol the school again. A few minutes later, a helicopter arrived above the school. The student happened to witness this scene. However, just as he was about to signal the helicopter to land, a frantic knocking came from the nearby door. But since he was mistreated by his classmates, he hated the school and never wanted to open the door for them. By now, the last chance for San and his group was slipping away. Zombies swarmed towards the rooftop. San and Lee tried to stop the zombies' advance while Chubby Boy and the Music Boy were still trying to break down the door. The helicopter finally reached the rooftop, and Bully casually walked towards it, holding a zombie. He met San and Lee along the way. Min walked through the zombie-infested campus and saw the people who had once bullied her, all now zombies. She still resented them and remembered her own words. In an office, Min found a lighter and spread fuel over the desks and books. She set the school on fire, and as the flames grew more intense, a smile appeared on her face. Afterward, she left the campus and rode a bicycle through the streets filled with zombies. On the rooftop, the group was struggling against the advancing zombies. San and Lee were also in the hallway, confronting Bully's attack. Choi's eye suddenly turned blood red. Just as Bully was about to gouge out San's eyes, she easily grabbed his neck and threw him into the hallway. But in the next second, Choi's eye inexplicably returned to normal. Amidst the struggle, the student on the rooftop was taken aboard the helicopter. The door then automatically opened due to the fire alarm. Nam immediately called everyone to the rooftop, but they were still a step too late. Despite their shouting for help, the helicopter flew away and they could only stand there helplessly. After that, they set up a large SOS signal on the ground. San told Lee about their recent encounter, suspecting that Choi, like Min and Bully, had evolved and mutated. But instead of being wary of Choi, Lee asked San if he would abandon Nam in the same situation, but San stood in silence. On the other side, firefighters sneaked through a rundown house. He found a map and marked the areas where zombies were lurking. After planning everything, he quietly left. Detective also reached the rooftop and tended to the man's wounds. They both lay there, basking in the sun. Just as Detective was wondering how to escape, a bus suddenly appeared on the street below. On closer inspection, it was the fleeing partner who had arrived. Detective cursed him, but after venting his anger, the two quickly jumped onto the bus's roof. They then signaled the partner to drive away, escaping the zombie horde. As evening approached, San and his group tried to start a fire using a wooden drill, but despite their efforts, they failed to produce even a spark. They argued back and forth. Eventually, Choi handed her lighter to Lee. That night, Detective acted as a father figure on the bus, a tender smile gracing his face. However, when faced with his pig-like partner, he couldn't help but make some sarcastic remarks. They accidentally hit Min, who was crossing the road. Detective got out of the bus to check on her. To their surprise, just as they stood up, a group of soldiers appeared and opened fire. Thanks to Detective's reaction, he and Min managed to duck and narrowly escape the hail of bullets. San and his group gathered around a fire, enjoying a carefree evening. They sang nostalgic songs, cherishing every moment even though the world was on the brink of destruction. However, the trapped zombies in the school building were still restless, and Shady Girl quietly opened the classroom partition. Just as she picked up a camera, a zombie appeared behind her. She hurried back into the partition. 
After calming down, she sat on the bed, looking at the camera and listening to her classmates talking about their experiences. A smile appeared on her face, but it also stirred up feelings of guilt within her. Looking at the food stored in the room, Shady Girl decided to pack it all and bring it to her classmates. However, when she heard about the death of Innocent Boy, she stopped what she was doing. She knew that she was responsible for his death and became consumed by guilt. In a daze, the image of Innocent Boy appeared before her, telling her the cause of his death. Her heart shattered, and she threw the food and helplessly crouched in place. It turned out that after she left the classroom, the now zombified innocent boy had been relentlessly pursuing her. The teacher saved her at the last moment and locked her in the music room, and because of that, the teacher also got bitten. Even in his final moments as a zombie, the teacher urged Shady Girl to return to her classmates and apologize. Shady Girl couldn't help but cry. After she finally came to her senses, Shady Girl filled her bag with food and opened the partition door. But not long after she left, she unexpectedly encountered Bully. Startled, she quickly retreated, and Bully asked if she was hungry. She nodded in agreement, only for Bully to bite her neck the next second. On the other side, a few classmates were sitting around a fire. San confessed his feelings to Nam. However, she appeared to be at a loss after hearing his confession. She went to the rooftop alone, and San followed her. Nam explained to San that they had grown up together since they were little, and San had become her best friend. She didn't want to break their friendship or lose San because of it. San asked if she had ever liked him, but all he got was an evasive answer. San could guess the answer, and he walked to the other side of the rooftop while Nam sat on the ground, crying. Bully appeared, peering out from a window before climbing up the pipe towards Nam's side. It wasn't until Bully jumped up that she finally reacted. Bully grabbed Nam and everyone hurriedly stood up. San was the first to rush forward but was thrown to the ground by Bully. Just as Bully was about to gouge San's eyes out, Nam stopped him. However, Bully flung her away like an adult toy and continued to press on San's eyes. Luckily, Lee kicked him aside. But as everyone helped San up, Lee was kicked into a pile of chairs by Bully. Seeing Lee in danger, Choi's eyes turned red again. Bully began to taunt San. San couldn't beat him, but he insulted Bully, infuriating him. The next second, Bully charged at the group. Even though everyone attacked him together, Bully shook everyone off and kicked San away. As Bully approached San, Lee picked up a weapon and struck him, but Bully grabbed Lee's throat. No matter how much Lee fought back, Bully easily knocked him down. Seeing her beloved in danger, Choi picked up a piece of wood and hit Bully, but he only trembled slightly before grabbing her by the throat and easily knocking her down. Choi picked up the wood again and stabbed it into Bully's thigh. She refused to let go, fearing he would harm others. She then grabbed Bully and threw him off the rooftop. With the crisis averted, everyone was injured. Inside the experimental base, the commander had extracted samples of the zombie virus, but because they hadn't found the source of the virus, they couldn't develop an effective treatment. As they puzzled over the situation, a soldier reported to his superior that a rescued detective seemed to have some knowledge of the virus. In the interrogation room, detective told that the zombie virus had been researched by a science teacher named Chan. Inside the science classroom was a laptop containing information on how to crack the virus. Upon hearing this, the commander continued his investigation while detectives sent his men to the school to retrieve the laptop. On the other side, the students on the rooftop gathered around the fire once more. Choi also opened up to everyone, sharing her thoughts and feelings. Suddenly, she heard the sound of a helicopter. Everyone hurried to the rooftop, and they saw a helicopter hovering above the school. The students grabbed torches and shouted for help, quickly attracting the attention of the soldiers. As the helicopter slowly descended, everyone became ecstatic. However, just when they thought they were finally saved, several armed soldiers appeared before them, ordering everyone to lie down. The soldiers then began checking the students' temperatures, with only Choi showing an abnormal reading. The soldiers promised that they would return to the rooftop to rescue everyone once they completed their mission. They then broke through the windows and launched a fierce attack on the zombies. The echoing gunshots drew zombies towards the classroom. As for Bully, who had fallen from the building, he had narrowly escaped death, but was now in a miserable state. After an intense shootout, the soldiers finally reached the science classroom and successfully decoded the laptop. They retreated to the rooftop, where San and the others had been waiting for some time. Just as they completed their mission and were about to leave with San and the others, an accident occurred in the base's quarantine zone. The commander saw via the surveillance system that the girl, Min, who had been with Detective, was attacking the boy who had betrayed her. Chaos ensued, but several soldiers managed to restrain her and put an end to the confusion. 
Witnessing the appearance of an asymptomatic carrier, the commander contacted the soldiers at the school and ordered them to stop the rescue operation. Despite the students being unarmed, the commander still commanded them to shoot them all. The soldiers found it hard to resist the orders, so they fired several shots into the night sky before boarding the helicopter and leaving. As the helicopter disappeared into the distance, San and the others stood there, frozen in despair. Meanwhile, the archery group of four had heard the sound of the helicopter and prepared to leave the archery range. They tied up the injured student and saw the helicopter flying overhead. Now zombies started to swarm towards them, so the group of four began their escape journey once again. On the other side, Firefighter was walking through the deserted streets under the cover of darkness. As he was making his way, a severely injured man approached him, pleading for help to save his pregnant wife. However, Firefighter didn't have much time left, as he needed to get to his daughter as soon as possible. So he handed over his gun to the man and told him to hold on until he returned. But to his surprise, the man immediately pointed the gun at Firefighter. So he had to warn the man that if he fired the gun, the sound would attract nearby zombies. Hearing this, the man didn't dare to act rashly while Firefighter left the street. Meanwhile, the commander learned about the virus's evolution process from a scientist. The virus could only be detected when it mutated, and it was impossible to notice it otherwise. As a result, the commander ordered that all the citizens in the quarantine zone be classified as asymptomatic carriers and subjected the rescued survivors to close observation. If any abnormalities were found, they would be shot immediately. Elsewhere, the group on the rooftop was caught in a sudden downpour. The rain washed away the dirt on their faces and quenched their thirst. The loud thunderclaps gave San an idea for escaping. They could use the thunder sound to attract the zombies' attention and then fleeing to the hill behind the school. Inspired by San's plan, they all left the rooftop and walked through the stairwells, avoiding the zombies' attacks during the thunderclaps and successfully reached the ground floor. However, as they crawled under vehicles, San encountered his mother, who had turned into a zombie. Unable to do anything, he watched as Chubby Boy attacked her. Enraged, San tackled Chubby Boy and punched him repeatedly. Their commotion attracted the attention of numerous zombies. The classmates continued to attack San's mother, and Lee restrained San from getting closer. San desperately yelled out, causing his classmates to stop their assault. Just then, more zombies rushed towards them, but San was still unwilling to leave. Fortunately, Nam convinced him to go, and they left the scene. Memories of his mother flooded San's mind as he called out to her, and she responded with a strained cry. It seems like the love between mother and child was the only force capable of breaking through the virus's barrier. Their commotion was noticed by the archer girl, who arrived with the injured classmate. They quickly fled the school building, with San and the others running into the school campus. However, a female student fell to the ground, and the zombies were about to attack, but her friend abandoned her and ran away. Fortunately, a student knocked the zombies away, saving the girl. Just as they were feeling hopeless, the archer girl shot an arrow, killing the approaching zombie. The group managed to reach the sports field, and Choi quickly sensed that something was wrong. As thunder rumbled, a large group of zombies appeared before them. They once again embarked on their escape. As the zombies were about to attack, the classmate used his body to block several of them, buying time for the others to escape. They eventually took refuge in a storage room, but the archer girl's brother got separated from the group and had to run alone into the campus to avoid the zombies. After calming down, Chubby Boy apologized to San, who was still immersed in grief. Nam held him in his arms while the girl, who had just abandoned her teammate, was attacked by zombies. She fell into a river during her escape and was relentlessly pursued by zombies, eventually dying in a field. On the other side, after the commander had examined the materials left by Chan, he began to simulate Chan's method to develop the virus. If successful, it would prove the credibility of the information, and the research institute could then develop the antidote. Additionally, the commander increased the military force to seal off the city's outskirts. Meanwhile, the quarantined councilwoman received a letter. She thought her superiors had come to rescue her, but instead, she received a resignation letter for her to sign. This way, if anything changed in the future, she could say she resigned from her position to avoid unnecessary responsibilities. The councilwoman sensed something was off and speculated that the Ministry of Defense might abandon the city. When she questioned the representative, he simply told her to sign the letter quickly and left. The next day, San wondered how to face life after his mother's passing. Nam comforted him. They had many things to do and couldn't stagnate due to hardships. 
At the same time, Firefighter fetched some ropes from a dessert shop and set up markers in a nearby forest to guide his daughter Nam. He slipped while climbing a hill and lost a telescope when he stood up. Upon waking, the group planned their escape from the storage room. In the chaos, Chubby Boy confessed his love to the Archer Girl, hoping to get a tongue massage from her, but only receiving a beating. He hid behind a storage cart, and the Archer Girl threw balls at him. At that moment, Lee thought of surrounding themselves with storage carts to avoid zombie attacks and escape the gym unharmed. So the group gathered materials to tie the carts together. However, the girl who had accompanied the Archer Girl objected, believing they could simply hide in the carts and escape without such a massive effort. The music boy chimed in, sparking an argument and wanting to add some background music to it. As tensions escalated, Choi suggested a vote. After voting, they decided to arrange the carts in a circle. On the other side, the virus was developed. After comparison, the similarity was found to be 98%, proving Chan's information to be accurate. The only solution at this point was to find the host and eliminate them completely. However, this also meant killing all the citizens, which should only be done as a last resort. Just then, soldiers reported that the zombies had breached the defense and spread to other cities. The officer immediately deployed all forces, stationed them outside the alert line, and evacuated the civilians. Meanwhile, San found an expired chocolate in the storage room and divided it among the others. After a slight boost in energy, they put on protective gear and formed a circle with the carts the moment the door opened. As more zombies approached, they couldn't move the carts and started throwing items at the zombies. Unfortunately, the music boy was bitten on his hand while rescuing others. He knew that if he didn't leave soon, he would infect his classmates. With more zombies coming, the music boy leaped out of the circle, driving away the surrounding zombies. Only then could the carts move forward. Just as they were about to reach the exit, the zombies attacked again, and the group found themselves in a predicament once more. On the other side, the commander simulated the movement of the zombies during a meeting. The red dots represented the locations of the zombies, who had started to act collectively. Soon, they would break through the city's blockade and spread to other cities. In just eight days, the zombies would invade Seoul. Faced with this conclusion, the commander ordered to simulate a bombing strategy to obliterate the entire city, if necessary, to save the whole country. Meanwhile, Firefighter ventured into the school. However, he didn't stay long before encountering a zombie attack. He had to hasten his departure. Elsewhere, San and the others pushed the cart to the door, only to find it locked by someone. No matter how hard they tried, they couldn't open it. As the last defense was about to be breached, Bully heard the commotion in the gym and rushed towards them. The students were all fighting the zombies. Inside the circle, only Nam remained, using her slender body to ram the iron door. Just as she was about to charge at it, Firefighter opened the door. Father and daughter embraced tightly. With Firefighter's help, San and the others successfully escaped the gym. When Bully arrived, he entered the wrong room, encountering the Archer Girl's brother. However, he was unaware of the enmity between Bully and San, nor did he know Bully had evolved through the virus. Bully was going to spare him, but upon smelling San's scent on the man, he bit him severely. Outside the gym, Firefighter planned to lead them out through the school's back mountain, hoping to seek help in other cities. However, a zombie suddenly appeared before them. Firefighter didn't hesitate to throw the zombie over his shoulder and urged the students to evacuate quickly. Everyone fled to the tennis court, but they were soon surrounded by zombies who broke through the fence. Chaos ensued, and Firefighter threw a torch to attract the zombies' attention, allowing the group to escape the danger. Firefighter didn't stop there. He told San to leave with his daughter while he whistled to attract more zombies and threw more lit torches. San and Lee forced Firefighter to leave together but were locked out by him. Nam shed tears of sorrow as she watched her father. With the number of zombies increasing, Nam had to flee with her companions. They escaped to a construction site and made their way up a building, eventually reaching a high platform under construction. Nam thought of her deceased father and picked up an iron rod to avenge him. San quickly threw the rod away, and Nam squatted down and cried in pain. The group squatted on the platform for some time, aware that remaining there wouldn't help their situation. So the archer girl called out to her companion to search for other exits on both sides of the platform. As the two walked further away, Nam told San that no matter what happened, she didn't want anyone else to die. Survival at the expense of others' lives was too selfish. San told her that they could discuss these matters once they had truly survived. On the other side, the commander discovered through sonic experiments that zombies had the strongest reaction to a certain frequency. 
The team decided to place a sonic emitter on a drone, lure all the zombies to a specific area, and then kill them all with an explosion. Just as San and the others let their guard down, Choi's eyes suddenly changed. Her zombie instincts seemed to drive her to seek food, so she menacingly moved towards Lee, but bit her own hand at the last moment. Lee noticed her actions, and when the others weren't paying attention, he comforted her, saying that if it happened again, she could bite him, so at least they would be the same kind of creature. Choi shed tears of sadness. She didn't want her beloved boy to face any danger because of her. While the two struggled in secret, the archer girl and her companion returned to the platform. To avoid frightening everyone, Lee wrapped Choi's eyes with cloth. The archer girl didn't find any useful information, and the group found themselves in a difficult situation once again. At that moment, Choi heard news of a helicopter broadcast. The soldiers were about to detonate their base, and civilians were urged to evacuate immediately. The students felt angry but could only wait in silence for their deaths. Meanwhile, at the commander's order, the soldiers activated the sonic emitter. Drones flew like insects toward the three target points, foreshadowing the imminent arrival of an explosion. Zombies followed closely, turning the scene into a bloodthirsty one. The people on the platform encountered a new crisis. A familiar voice reached them, and it turned out to be Bully. San grabbed a baseball bat and swung it at Bully, but he was knocked down easily. Bully stepped on San, showing off his dominance. Lee punched Bully, but was nearly knocked off the platform. Bully lifted San high into the air, but San managed to slap him. This action enraged Bully, who bit San's arm in front of everyone, then threw him against a wall. Before Bully could bite San's neck, a sudden sonic disturbance disrupted his nerves. San seized the opportunity to push him off the platform. By then, the city's zombies had already reached the target points, and the commander ordered the missile launch countdown. San stood up, knowing he would soon turn into a zombie. Looking at the girl he loved, San gave her his name tag as a final memento. Right before he turned, he shared their first and last kiss without using their tongues. They embraced for a moment, and then San jumped onto the windowsill to attract the zombie's attention. The others took this opportunity to escape from the platform. Some time had passed, and blood began to flow from San's nostrils. Bully, having survived the fall from the platform, encountered San once more. San taunted him again, and the two became entangled in a fight. After several rounds, San was pinned down by Bully. Bully then gouged out San's eye. San screamed in agony and struggled to his feet, while Bully proudly pursued him. By then, the missiles had reached their targets, leaving destruction in their wake. San and Bully were engulfed by the Inferno. Those who had escaped to the forest couldn't avoid their fate either. The commander stared at the black screens for quite some time. He knew better than anyone what the four explosions had sacrificed. However, to prevent the country from falling, he had no choice but to make this move. To express his apologies to the citizens, he sought out the councilwoman, asking her to soothe the surviving residents. Before she could even agree, he left the quarantine zone and returned to his office. The commander pulled up all the blinds, put on his uniform, and recorded himself on camera. He addressed everyone who would see the video, saying that after witnessing Chan burn his zombified wife and son earlier that morning, he seemed to understand that the only way to save everyone was to sacrifice some. As a husband and father, Chan couldn't bear to see anyone get hurt. Likewise, as a commander and soldier, he couldn't bear to see the citizens suffer. So both of them made their own choices. Now, the commander was willing to take full responsibility. He dialed his wife's number and said his love to her before pointing the gun at his chin. The moment the bullet was fired, tears streamed down his face. His wife sent a text message, but there would be no more response on the other end of the line. That night, the city was engulfed in a deathly silence. Nam's name tag remained beside San as the desolate night passed. About half a day had passed since the bombing, and the survivors mourned in silence in their corners. The councilwoman tore up her resignation letter. Meanwhile, Detective looked out the window and asked his partner a question. To save more lives, how much cruelty must one endure? On the other side, Nam and the others had also survived the explosion. They spent a quiet night in the forest, but when the sun rose, Nam couldn't find her beloved boy anymore. No matter how much Lee comforted her, she couldn't simply walk away. She asked everyone else to leave first and went back to the construction site to look for San. Watching Nam's retreating figure, Lee and Choi followed her. Chubby Boy, injured in his leg due to the explosion, had to stay behind. The three of them arrived at the construction site, which had already been reduced to rubble. Nam desperately called out San's name, but never received a response. 
After saying a formal goodbye to San, the three of them returned to the forest. Meanwhile, in the smog-filled city, soldiers were still carrying out their clear-up operations. They marked each cleared area on the doors. Now that most of the zombies were dead, Choi felt she would only be a burden on others if she continued like this. In response, Nam said that without her, they would have probably died in the zombies' hands already. At that moment, they realized that they seemed to be lost, but they discovered the mark left by Firefighter on a tree. Following the mark, they finally found their way out of the forest. During the process, Nam suddenly saw her father's abandoned flashlight. It was then that she understood that her father had planned an escape route for her all along. Thinking of this, she couldn't help but cry. The group quickly escaped to another city, where the fog was still thick and the casualties were heavy. In this place, Choi heard some strange noises. Suddenly, zombies rushed towards them from all directions. Dragging the injured Chubby Boy, the group started another journey of escape. But after taking only a few steps, Chubby Boy fell heavily to the ground. Lee picked up a nearby shovel, signaling everyone to take Chubby Boy away quickly. However, they wouldn't abandon any of their companions again. They all picked up weapons, ready to face the incoming zombies. Now, several zombies rushed towards them, and the group launched their attacks. With Choi's help, they quickly dealt with dozens of zombies. But at that moment, the archer girl was attacked by a zombie. Fortunately, the archer girl's brother took the fatal blow for her, saving her from danger. Still, the zombie clung to the boy's neck until the others knocked it down together. The archer girl burst into tears, bidding farewell to her brother before he turned into a zombie. As he was about to attack the archer girl, Choi instantly cut his throat. With heavy hearts, the group saw more zombies approaching. The archer girl wanted to take revenge with a shovel, but was stopped by Choi, who told her not to die meaninglessly. But in a daze, Choi's zombie instincts acted up again. During their escape, she kept struggling with the virus. Gazing at the receding crowd, she arrived at a street corner, hitting her head against the wall and even biting her own hand. On the other side, Lee noticed that Choi hadn't followed them, so he hurriedly went back to search for her. Nam didn't want Lee to go alone and accompanied him. The two searched every corner and eventually found Choi enjoying a dead corpse. Nam called out to her, who, however, swiftly tackled her to the ground. Lee rushed forward to intervene but couldn't bring himself to harm her. Suddenly, Choi lunged for Nam's neck, but she managed to control her urges and stood up, disappearing into the thick fog. Unable to find Choi, Lee and Nam reluctantly returned to their companions. After a challenging journey, they finally emerged from the dense fog and encountered soldiers stationed on a railway track. After receiving some supplies, the survivors were taken to a quarantine zone by the soldiers. They were brought to an interrogation room and questioned about a man named Chan. Despite being saved by the soldiers this time, the group refused to cooperate further in the investigation as they had been abandoned by these same soldiers before, resulting in many deaths. As time went by, the soldiers managed to eliminate all the zombies and the city's lockdown was lifted. People gradually left the quarantine zone to embrace a better life. Late at night, Nam climbed over a wall behind a hill and arrived at a large tree covered in mementos for their deceased companions. Nam laid out some snacks on the overgrown ground and brought them to her classmates. As she mentioned San's name, tears filled her eyes. Just as she was leaving, she noticed a fire in the woods. The next morning, Nam found Lee and recalled Choi mentioning that if they met again, she would light a bonfire. Nam suspected that Choi was still alive and wanted to go back to check that night. Lee agreed to accompany her, but Nam asked him not to tell the others. However, when night came, Lee still brought their other classmates to the hill. Although the virus outbreak had passed, they had been through life and death together and couldn't abandon Choi, who still protected them despite being turned into a zombie. Everyone brought snacks to the tree to pay their respect to the dead, and the archer girl noticed the fire from the school. The group arrived at the devastated school, with Nam lost in memories from the past. They climbed to the top of the teaching building where snowflakes began to fall from the sky. They found a roaring bonfire and speculated who might have lit it. At that moment, a familiar figure walked by. It was Choi emerging from the shadows. Nam pleaded for her to rejoin the group. However, Choi knew that she had a zombie virus in her veins and that things could never be the same as before. The drama of season one ends with Choi hearing some sudden noises. She then jumped off the building, disappearing from their sight. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.